Automated weather observation. One, four, zero, zero, Zulu, weather, wind, calm, visibility, one, zero, clear, below, one, two, thousand, temperature, two, five, Celsius, two point, two, three, altimeter. All right, so today we have Spike, who is six months old, and uh, this is his third time in the airplane. The previous two times, uh, the first time we just did some taxiing, and uh, the second time we actually took him for a pattern, and this is the third time. We're going to try to fly up to, say, 3,500 feet. Um, I don't know if that's going to be enough to get his ears to pop or our ears to pop, but we'll see and try to get him through that transition and then uh, probably come back down. Uh, but Spike is not the first dog we have flown with. Uh, so when I built this airplane, um, I built this shelf that is not part of the Zenith kit, uh, specifically to hold a dog like Spike. And uh, today he's 43 pounds and he fits in the cargo area. Uh, on the Zenith 750 Cruiser, the maximum cargo weight is 80 pounds, so he is half of our uh, cargo allotment, if you will. But uh, Mrs. Ozark Garage made this nice cargo net here to uh, keep the dog relatively contained, as well as uh, any baggage we may have. And uh, you can see he's wearing some ear protection. So these are from Rex Specs, that's the company that makes the, uh, the dog goggles. And uh, they seem to work better than the previous set we had, which were hard plastic with straps. So the hard plastic ones with the straps really never stayed in place. They slid around a lot. I uh, wasn't really a fan. These ones seemed a little bit more resilient for him bumping around and trying to, you know, take them off. Because he's not really a happy camper when you try to put them on yet. But uh, that's part of the thing about training any puppy is consistency and repetition. So um, we're trying to be consistent and uh, repetitious on this. If you have a dog that fits in a kennel and kennels well, um, and the kennel fits in the airplane, by all means use it. But in this size of an aircraft, which is not very big, and this size of a dog, a kennel is very impractical, right? We couldn't even really get the kennel in here. So um, in the absence of a kennel, we have a zookeeper. So Mrs. Ozark Garage is here, uh, keeping the dog calm and under control keep him from uh, jumping around and interfering with the flight in any manner, shape, or form. So I will focus on the flying, she will focus on keeping the dog contained, and uh, happy and calm while we do this. So uh, it's an early morning. It is uh, reasonably cool for an early morning in August here. And that's what we're going to try to do is try a calm, cool time because uh, he gets hot in here, I get hot in here. I typically like to have the doors open, but the doors are uh, a little tempting for him to try to escape, so we keep him shut until the airplane is warmed up and we're ready to take off, and then we get up into some cooler air. He is housebroken. He's been housebroken for some time now. Uh, he rides really well in the car. We can drive several hours without any issues in the car. He doesn't get car sick. Uh, even still, though, we have made a mess kit that we uh, bring along just in case. So this is our very basic spill kit for in the airplane for the dog. Um, nothing more than a few gallon Ziploc bags. Um, one is, uh, take that back, this is a quart Ziploc bag. So that's just got some oil dry in it. And if you have a cat, you can use kitty litter. I don't have a cat, so this is oil dry. And this is really just to soak up any messes if there are any. A couple bags for the messes themselves. And then a larger bag that we can double bag it with and some paper towels. Flight attendants, please prepare the cabin for takeoff. I'm trying. I lost your dog's ear, Mops. Okay. You gonna fix it? You just give me a second. Shove those little ears back there. As you can see, uh, no ear protection is perfect. Maybe if we had the matching <laughs> goggles that would hold it on his face, it wouldn't be such a problem. But, no. Okay. All right, here we go.
As I said before, the key to training any puppy is consistency and repetition. So like I said, this is his third flight, or excuse me, third time in the plane, second flight. And like I said, the plane is to get to 3,500, but if uh, it becomes difficult to control, starts to become difficult to control or restless or something, we will probably abort and just bring it in and try again later. So here we are passing 2,000 feet. It's already, already noticeably cooler. Hopefully that helps calm them down a little bit. And we can get one from there. All right, passing through 3,000. Seems like he's still doing well. Haven't run out of treats yet, have we? No. Okay. So we're going to keep on going up to 3,500. Uh, we got some traffic coming into the airport here a little bit, so we might circle around a little bit, let that traffic get out of the way, and then uh, probably bring her in for a landing. He is no longer interested in the food. Nope. Oh, Saving the last remaining treats for landing. <laughs> All right, so we've leveled off here at 3,500 or so, and uh, we're going to do a couple circles because uh, we've got inbound traffic going to drop into the pattern here, and so we'll let them get out of our way, and uh, we'll spiral in and, uh, and land. All right, so now we're making a slow spiraling descent here. Like I said, I don't know if this is high enough to get his ears to pop. I don't know how sensitive his ears are versus ours. But we'll get him gradually used to some altitude changes. And uh, that'll be it for this flight. Until next time. <laughs> He's ready to go. All right, we're back on the ground. Got the doors open here. Cool off a little bit. Dog did pretty well, but uh, that's probably enough for today. So uh, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and uh, we'll see you next time.